So you said you were at the trial? Yeah, I went to some of it. Yeah, I went for I went for a week at a trial. I went for a week. Uh, I saw um, the the you know the closing statements. Uh, it was you know quite a show. You had these uh, three lawyers for El Chapo, these real characters. I mean, it was crazy seeing El Chapo. You know, being that close to see El yeah, Chapo. Right how far there. away from him were you? I mean, you know, not. I mean, a few feet away. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're. You're seeing him there in the flesh, I and mean, that was obviously a, a. Did he feel like a powerful presence? You know, it, it's you know because you, you know you know who the guy is, uh, so it's you know, it's like there was people there um, who who came. You know, I remember one couple there who flew from San Francisco, like Mexican Americans, flew from San Francisco to come and see just to be at the trial, queuing up in the morning. Uh, he, you know, he was. Obviously, you know, it's like, you know, the presence is there. Um, he looked, it's interesting in his village, I met his, you know, cousin, his mother, and it's interesting how much they, the, the mannerisms and how much they look very close in this family. You kind of see it there. He was, you know, trim in his suit. What about his eyes? Did he have the killer eyes? Yeah, I mean, he looks smart. I mean, they, 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 they look, I mean, they... I guess I kind of had just like sharkish look in his eyes. He doesn't, he doesn't, he didn't look... I guess one of the things, the alluring things about him is he doesn't like, you know, some of these guys just come across as really violent. This guy doesn't have, you know, this obviously he's got a certain genius there. Uh, but anyway, I mean, the, the thing was a crazy show. Uh, like you had uh, the lawyer, so you had three lawyers. You had Lichtman, who was this guy who'd like done mafia trials and this kind of crazy show he was doing. And in this closing statement, he was trashing the witnesses. There was 14 cooperating witnesses against El Chapo. Uh, and one of them, some of them were the Cifuentes. This, the, the, these traffickers come as traffickers of Cifuentes. And he was like saying, it's kind of crazy show. And he talked to the jury saying, saying, would you buy a used car off the Cifuentes? Would you trust the Cifuentes? To babysit your children, <laughs> so why are you going to believe what they say? <laughs> you know, like it's kind of crazy stuff he come out with, and then there's the other the other lawyer, uh, um, who was uh, Eduardo Balareso, is Ecuadorian a, a guy from Ecuador. He's an interesting character as well, who was the, one of the guys who first kind of uh, linked up with El Chapo. Also represented uh, Beltran Leva. An interesting thing, the beard, yeah, the beard, or, or rather his brother. Uh, uh, Hector uh, Alfredo Betran Leva uh, Mochomo is in prison. An interesting thing, apparently, this is kind of some some of the weird stuff to figure out. A lot of this stuff's hard to make sense of. Uh, so, witnessing against El Chapo were the family members of his supposedly supposed friends. So, El Mar Zambada's son and brother witnessed against El Chapo. Hector Beltran Leva, the enemy of El Chapo, the guy they fought the big war with his family, sorry, Alfredo, Alfredo Beltran Leva didn't witness. And lawyers told me that it was Alfredo, it was the Beltran Levas, in fact, who recommended these lawyers to El Chapo. Mm. Kind of weird connections there. And, and the- Perhaps it's like that they're unified against the feds. I, you know, it, it sometimes these these things are. Uh, it's hard to to make sense of the among these Sinaloa and traffickers. Um, it, it's what's crazy about these guys. I mean, these are said these guys from these. I mean, a lot of them are from quite a small area. I mean, Beltran Leva's village is right up against El Chapo's village. You have La Tuna, and right there is La Palma, where the Beltran Levas are from. I mean, you can literally see the one village from the other, and all these guys, these Sinaloan guys. Uh, you know, Beltran Levas, uh, Zambada, Guzman, all these families and so many more, all from a pretty small area. Like, what is it about that area that's created these figures and figures that have come from these poor mountain communities and have gone on to control, you know, empires worth billions of dollars or control the drug trade worth so much, you know, move so much drugs, have been involved in such a powerful game. So, yeah, I guess it's kind of part of the craziness of all of this. So where's Chapo House now? What was his sentence? And do you think he will be trying to plan an escape? 
so life uh is he already there colorado desert the uh supermax supermax so. yeah he's already there now yeah i mean he was going to go there right after the trial uh have you, have you checked? Have you been following the news the last no, couple of days? No, not. But I've it, looked at that prison and it, seen some of the famous yeah. people have been there. Yeah, yeah, Sammy yeah. Sammy was there and John Gotti, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a Supermax prison in Colorado, which he, he was destined to go to, which he should be there by now. I mean, so if there's any appeals, he was being held in Manhattan, be transferred there to Supermax. Uh, so I tried to interview in there before... I wrote I wrote to the prison before to, a while ago to try to interview Mata Ballesteros because I met his Mata Ballesteros' son in uh, in Honduras interviewed his son there and then I attempted to go there they, they didn't want to give me the interview or they said he, he didn't want to talk I, it's very I, I suppose I know no journalists to interview anybody anybody in there so it's, it's the most hardcore prison in the United States maybe the most hardcore prison in the world uh you're in there's a you know the, the the list of inmates is a who's who of the biggest you know criminals terrorists do you know any of them off the top of your head yeah i mean i mean you already mentioned uh sammy the bull yeah he's out now out now um the one of the, the leader of the aryan brotherhood uh the shoe bomber right reed richard richard, richard reed, reed. Is, i mean who was some probably come some random guy from Brixton or something who like decided to go on a plane and try and blurt up the bomb in his shoe and now has made all of us take our shoes off uh you know when we get on airplanes a lot of airplanes but like you know he he's in there um in terms of the uh Latin American gangsters so you've got Mata Ballesteros uh Garcia Abrego is he still there the the, the who's the, the head of the Gulf cartel for a long time and you know you're there in uh, solitary confinement, twenty three and a half hours a day or so. Uh, they get you know, you know with lights on. You know people, part of their mental state deteriorates very fast in those conditions. You've been in solitary much? Yeah. How, how, well, how long were you in solitary um, for? Probably over approximately a year. Yeah. And I didn't mind it, to be honest, because yeah. I read and did yoga and I'm an introverted person. You know, you don't have to deal with all of the craziness. Yeah. But I can see if I'd gone longer, I would have gone off the deep end because it does affect you mentally. Yeah. But just getting any one year taste of it compared to what these guys have got. And I can understand how people have been in five years, 10 years, they want to kill themselves and they go completely crazy. I completely understand that. I'm not making light of it. But for me personally, just going in from a year after being in Fair. intense um, situations, yeah, um, I didn't mind it. So how many hours a day were you totally by yourself though? All right. So I was put in the super maximum security prison. Um, in, Arizona, in the Arizona state yeah, system? Yeah. I was fast tracked there because the prosecutor... She'd done all these dirty tricks on me throughout my remand period because I yeah. wouldn't cooperate. And the final farewell to me was she put my sentence down as 34 years. Mm. Right, it was only nine and a half years. So if your sentence is that high, you get a fast track to Supermax. Um, so they allow you out for a shower every like three days, I think it is. Mm. Shankproof armor, Darth Vader masks. You got to get handcuffed every, the door and every three days. Yeah, yeah. They march you to the, the to the shower. So uh, between that, so where you you got no like twenty four hours a day. You got you got no exercise or no. They by law they're supposed to offer you some exercise. So they come around at like five in the morning when you sleep, and they say, "Do you want to go in the handball court?" Mm. And because you sleep and you can't answer them, you don't get it. Mm. And then they, they say, "Yeah, they've offered you exercise." Mm. But I was in maximum security before that upstairs in um, in um, the Madison Street Jail, Sheriff Joe Ohio, mm. because of another thing the prosecutor did. I, I went for a bail hearing. My bail was 750000 And the judge doubled my bail to $1.5 because of this dirty trick the prosecutor did. So I was moved to um, the maximum security there. So it was those two periods were back to back where I did almost a year, completely locked mm. down only allowed out in, the, in that max security actually i was allowed into a day room uh, most days for an hour to have a shower and a phone call mm. and then i had to go back to my cell yeah so so what do you do you think 
the super max how different do you think that is to uh i mean so Ch chapel was in was in manhattan correctional facility but in the he was in already in very severe conditions then in terms of solitary confinement is it much different do you think between like one and the other i mean after a certain point is it pretty much the same or i mean is it going to be the worst regime in supermax or there's so many factors yeah so chapo is in the supermax of supermaxes yeah um arizona is unique because of the heat yeah and in the in maximum security in the jail arpaio didn't have any kind of there's a swamp cooler but it barely worked yeah so they used heat as a form of torture so my body is completely covered in skin infections and bed sores I and mean, it looks like i've spilt battery acid on my leg mm. i'm so hot if i scratch myself because i'm sweating mm clumps of skin are coming off under my nails mm. so there's all different factors in different every state's got different factors at play but our pyros was considered really brutal because mm. of the, the conditions that he um, you know human rights violations were off the scale yeah the feds have got more money so so chapo's in federal supermax they've got more money way way more secure than anywhere in the states but you know probably um some things might be slightly better than under our pyro mm. Yeah, so so anyway, uh, I don't think there's an escape there. No, I don't, I don't think he's planning an escape uh, from Supermax. I, don't, I, don't, I, I mean, I always think with the old chap because I never want to, I always say things and, and, and you know, like, you know, you go on TV shows and say something and they, they, they prove it wrong. The, you know, with the old chap case, it could be so crazy. You say, oh, this guy could never escape. And then the next day, find the guy's escaped. But it seems like it seems pretty impossible. You think it's possible an escape from uh, Supermax? They said that nobody would escape from um, what was the one the Clint Eastwood movie? Alcatraz. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they don't. We don't think they survived, but they did. Yeah. So I, I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it. Unless like there was some kind of disturbance in the whole of the country. Like the country went. There was a war. Mm. Prisoners have escaped during wars. Mm. Um, and like people, earthquakes, earthquakes, wars, helicopter attack on the pri on the prison. Yeah, I was I was in Haiti when the earthquake happened. I, well, I went there after the earthquake to Haiti, and there was loads of prisoners escaped then from the prison then. And it, yeah, how I many? Yeah, in earthquakes, so maybe something like that. So if there's an act of God beyond beyond that, beyond like an earthquake, it seems pretty, or like some kind of faraway situation, it seems doesn't seem possible. But yeah, I mean, crazier things have happened. <laughs>